epicenter of this U.S. outbreak is New York. This Navy hospital ship arrived in New York City Harbor today. It has 1,000 beds on board and will be used as overflow for people who are not infected with COVID-19 but need hospital care. The Comfort Navy ship also has 12 operating rooms that could be up and running within 24 hours. There's a desperate shortage of beds and equipment and not just in New York. Jackson Prosco reports. Bodies. Body, body. New York's hospitals are running out of room for the living and the dead. This is for real, y'all. In Brooklyn, a this forklift for loaded bodies into a refrigerated truck. The hospital morgue is filled to capacity. In some emergency rooms, plastic sheets are used to separate infected patients as doctors and nurses struggle with a shortage of protective equipment for themselves. We are seeing a lot of younger patients that are coming through the door that are sicker as well, and that, that is surprising and a little scary. In iconic Central Park, a field hospital is under construction, while at the convention center, thousands of temporary beds await their first patients. COVID-19 has killed more than 250 people in New York State in just 24 hours. There is no American who is immune to this virus. I don't care if you live in Kansas. I don't care if you live in Texas. New York is days away from running out of ventilators. Louisiana only has enough to last for another week. America's public health officials now warn that even the most optimistic scenario is bleak. If we do things together well, almost perfectly, we could get in the range of 100,000 to 200,000 fatalities. Experts say the response has been far from perfect. It's not consistent, it's not uniform across the country, and there are still a lot of people who are not taking this seriously. In Florida, where case numbers have begun to surge, the governor signed an order urging people to stay home, but only in part of the state, while Virginia neared a complete lockdown that won't expire until mid-June. If we don't do everything we can now, we're going to look back and wonder how many more lives we could have saved. In the rush to get medical supplies, there's a new wrinkle. States find themselves bidding against each other and the federal government and private hospitals, all with single suppliers. That's resulting in higher prices at the worst possible time. Donna? There's such a scarce resource right now. Jackson, thank you. We're all watching closely what's happening in the United States next door to us. It's now the epicenter of the global COVID-19 pandemic, and it's hitting close to home for a lot of Canadians. In Toronto, this country's biggest city, there are now nearly 600 cases. That's still a fraction of what New York City is dealing with. But the two cities are often compared as financial and cultural hubs. So is it possible Toronto could be at the same kind of risk? Jeff Semple went to find out. <laughs> New York City's healthcare workers have endured hurricanes and 9-11, but say they've never encountered a threat like this. We're fighting for your lives, but we also fight fighting for our lives too. We are also scared. The epicenter of the U.S. outbreak is watching its COVID-19 cases soar and supplies run out. I need eyewear and I need face masks. I need as many as you can get. And for many Canadians, these scenes are hitting too close to home. This is right across the border. And, you know, sadly, if it can happen there, it can happen anywhere. But so far, the outbreak is unfolding much differently here, in part because it's easier to keep your distance. New York City averages more than 10,000 people per square kilometer. That's twice as many as the city of Toronto. In fact, Vancouver tops Canada's list when it comes to population density, but is still nowhere close to the most crowded community in the United States, Manhattan home to more than 25,000 people per square kilometer. As the more denser cities you have, the more human interaction you have. The more people go to the grocery stores, meet in elevators, small places, there's a lot more entertainment options. So that all these factors enhance the spread. And in New York, that problem is compounded by healthcare accessibility and poverty. But population density doesn't necessarily determine destiny. Seoul is twice as crowded as New York, but South Korea has had far more success curtailing the contagion. In part, experts say, because they tested early and often. And so too did Canada. We had a better uh, ability to test people. It wasn't perfect, but it was better than what was happening in many parts of the state. And the result is plain to see. 
the number of confirmed cases in Ontario compared to New York State. But experts warn our actions this week could make the difference. It really is up to us whether or not we want to take the path of New York City. Jeff Semple, Global News, Toronto. There's more alarming news out of Washington State tonight. At least 45 members of a choir have been diagnosed with COVID-19. About 60 members of the Skagit Valley Choral Group went to rehearsal on March 6. Three weeks later, the majority of those who were there have tested positive, And two people have died. There's been a lot of mixed messaging about masks, who should wear them, and how much they really protect you. Austria, for example, is making it compulsory to wear them in supermarkets. Austrian grocery stores will start handing out free masks at entrances, though they are not medical-grade masks. The World Health Organization and Canada's public health officers say wearing masks in public to protect yourself is not necessary. You should be keeping your physical distance from others and washing your hands. Plus, we need to be careful not to waste masks. They should be saved for frontline responders who have direct contact with sick people. Also, if you have any symptoms, you have no business being out in public, mask or no mask. Prince Charles, who tested positive for COVID-19, is now out of self-isolation. The 71-year-old had only mild symptoms and spent seven days at the royal family's Balmoral estate in Scotland. And the planned date for Tokyo's delayed Summer Olympics has now been revealed. The opening ceremony is now planned for July 23, 2021, almost exactly a year after the original date. The Paralympics will begin, if this is all over, on August 24th.